Hello everybody! In this video, we will try to understand and learn how we can model systems with DC motor. Okay, so this is a typical DC motor, which is a little bit general. Okay, DC motor, DC motor, okay. And DC motors are devices which can convert electrical energy to mechanical energy, or uh, similarly, it can, they can also convert mechanical energy into electrical energy if they use as a transformer. Okay, so let's start to understand the components of a DC motor before going to the equations of motion or equations of dynamics. Okay, so this part, electrical part, is called the armature circuit. Okay, this part is called the field circuit. Okay, uh, this is an illustration of a uh, DC motor, okay, which generates torque, okay, which is applied to a load. It can be inertial load, resistive load, or a much complex load that we learned in the class. Okay, uh, back EMF voltage is critical for many systems because uh, once you generate a motion generated torque uh, proportion to the velocity of the load, it generates a back EMF voltage. And back EMF voltage is the technically critical part when if we use DC motor as a transformer where we want to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Okay, good. So in the armature part, we have an armature voltage. Okay, so this is armature voltage. It's generally the input voltage that we supply to the system. Okay, armature resistance. Okay, uh, armature inductance and back EMF voltage. In the field part, we have field voltage, field current, field inductance, and field resistance. Okay, so in addition to these variables, what we need to also find is called a magnetic flux. Okay, uh, phi of is computed as this kf a constant that is technically related with the design of the motor times i f of t okay so it's a function of a uh, field current okay if you use or if we technically model and a permanent magnet dc motor in general the technique doesn't have a field circuit or a circuit which has like resistance, inductance, and a field current. But we have a permanent magnet which generates this field uh, magnetic flux, okay, which is constant for permanent magnet DC motors. Okay, good. So in that respect, uh, let's write, okay, so let's rewrite this. Does we need that? Kf times Ift. So how? Torque is computed or generated. Torque output is equal to a km, a constant times field magnetic flux or magnetic flux times i a t, which is the current that's flowing through the armature circuit. Okay, that's nice, right? So if we expand it, it's equal to km times k f times i f of t times i a of t and here comes the problem okay so we have two variables multiply each other and this is technically a nonlinear operation right okay so if they are both input acting on the system okay and if we control them independently multiplication of two independent variables our function then is a nonlinear effect okay but the good thing is in general in most of the applications either IF field current or effective field circuit is constant or armature current is kept constant. For ad some advanced control schemes, we may use both IF and IA uh, for more advanced purposes, especially for technical dealing nonlinearities and other kind of uh, saturation like effects. But uh, for the sake of this course, uh, we will keep either IF or IA constant. If we keep IF constant, it will be armature control DC motor. If we keep IA constant, it will be field control DC motor. Okay, let's uh, talk about the armature current control DC motor. Okay, in this case, as you can see from here, okay, let's simplify this. This is, as I told you, is constant. Okay, IF, it is constant. Either it's kept constant because we use a permanent magnet motor or we just give a constant uh, field current supply. Okay, in that respect, we can simplify this in a very nice form, which is equal to K times, let's say, R K A times I A T is equal to torque, equal to torque, which means that the torque output is a linear 
function or like proportional to the input current, which is the equation that we need to model an arbitrary control DC motor. Okay, you can also even ignore the previous parts. Okay, but of course we need another equation because we don't know EB, vacuum of voltage, which is very similar. EB of T is technically equal to KB, another constant, times omega T. Okay, so these are two equations that we need to model a system if it has a DC motor. Okay, let's model a very simple DC motor system. Okay, let's clean that. Okay, so DC motor is connected at, to a load, let's say J load, uh, which is also suffers or that affected by a viscous uh, rotational damper of beta. The goal is finding the block diagram of the system first, then finding a resultant transfer function. Okay, block diagrams are very useful for this kind of coupled systems because you don't need to do all of the mathematical simplifications by hand. Uh, and once you have a block diagram, it may be easier to find transfer function, also state space representation of a system. Okay, so let's start with the uh, mechanical part. Okay, in mechanical part, we have load, let's call it J because we have only single inertia. You know that J times omega dot is equal to torque, which is coming from the electrical circuit, minus beta times omega. Okay, so if we take the Laplace transform of this expression, we can easily find that omega s, which is the Laplace transform of omega, is equal to 1 over J s plus beta times Laplace transform the torque. Okay, that's nice, right? Okay, so we know that. And we know that this torque is simply a constant multiplied with the current. Okay, so now what we need to find is a transfer function that maps the input, which is the input armature voltage. Okay, I didn't talk to be before. The input of the system is the armature voltage. We need to find a transfer function that kind somehow maps VA, the input voltage, to the current. In order to do that, we need to solve this electrical circuit. Okay, let's take, oh, sorry for that. Okay, so let's also circle this. Yeah, it will be critical for us. That's great. So let's write the case of voltage law. Okay, so VA, and I will direct the right in a Laplace domain. Okay, so VA S, okay, minus voltage of the resistor, which is simply equal to I A S times R A. Okay, so what is the voltage of the inductor? We know that V L A is equal to L times D I A over D T. Okay, so if we take the Laplace transform of this, we will find that S times L A times okay I A S. That's very good. Okay, and minus E B of S. Okay, voltage should be equal to zero. That's great. So let's simplify this. Okay, so what is EB of S? Let's keep it EB of S and we will later find it that is equal to okay, RA plus LA times S IA of S. So IA of S is equal to VA minus. EB of S, so we have S here, okay, multiply with 1 over uh, LA times S plus RA, so this is our second block that we need to complete our block diagram structure, okay, so that's nice. So we know that here, okay, torque is generated by current, we need to multiply with the constant, which is equal to KA. In order to compute EB of S, we know that we need to multiply it with a constant of K, of course, but the feedback, we obtain a feedback from the output. This is critical because, okay, so EB of S is equal to KB times omega S, which means that we obtain a feedback from the output. Okay, let's uh, finish the block diagram topology a little bit. Okay, so... Okay, that's nice. So this is our first block. Okay, we have this, we have this. Okay, that's great. Okay, 
uh, let's write okay so let's clean that one over l a s plus r a which generates i a of s okay so uh, what we need to do is we need to multiply this with a constant to generate the torque okay so let's do that okay okay that's nice let's write this okay that's great that's nice so if we multiply with k a we generate torque of s okay so torque of s is technically processed with an transfer function to generate omega s which is the actual output of the system okay so in order to do that what we do we make a big transfer function okay let's do that like this okay so this is equal to 1 over j s plus beta that's great this is omega s is the output okay so what is the input of this electrical circuit we know that it's equal to v a minus e b of s we have a difference operation here so what we do is so we have a summation operator okay so this is like this okay so this is like this that's nice so okay so this is coming like this that's nice okay so let's clean that let's write it here so this is plus this is negative this is v a of s this is technically e b of s but what is e b of s let's check e b of s is here you know that is equal to kb times omega t so we have a feedback gain okay okay so for that let's make it bigger okay so we have a feedback gain this is equal to kb which is coming to directly from this okay that's nice that's very good okay this is omega this is omega s now we technically complete the transfer function topology you can also look at the lecture notes uh, to get a clean understanding of uh, the processes the computations that i did here okay so the take-home message is here is this if you have an electrical motor and it is controlled by a armature control topology it means that there is an inherent feedback embedded on the system okay the feedback is coming from the spectrum voltage which means that the input current of this electrical circuit part or technique the torque generated by the electrical motor is affected by the output angular velocity this uh, technically inherent uh, feedback topology helps us stabilize the electrical motors which is good it may technically complete some of our computations we will talk about it later uh, that's fine uh, there are techniques to technically deal with this kind of computations, but the basic idea this feedback topology somehow uh, help us stabilization uh, of this electrical mechanical energy conversion. Okay, now let's try to find a transfer function between input and output. Okay, so it's very easy. So because if you remember, okay, this part is G of S and this part is called H of S. This is a simple feedback topology okay such that g of let's say p of s okay so p of s is equal to g of s 1 plus h of s times g of s okay so if i technically make this operation if i simplify everything i will obtain that the transfer function between input and output is equal to k a divided by a l a j s squared plus l a beta plus r a times j s plus r a times beta plus k a k b that's it which it technically generates a second order transfer function okay which has two poles uh, but numerator dynamic is static so we don't have any zeros for the system okay so this is a transfer function of a very simple armature control dc motor model where at the output, at the load, we have an inertia, we have a viscous damper, but of course, uh, you should expect more complicated systems, especially from the mechanical side, because we don't just uh, draw, uh, drive a single load, 
it can be connected to the gear, they can be affected by the springs and other kind of dampers.